I'm Bob Odenkirk, and this is how I became Hutch. Hutch Mansell is a regular dad guy, suburbanite fella. You pass on the street and you barely notice him. And that's exactly what he intended to be because he's kind of in hiding. He actually has a past, a violent past, but that was all before he got married and had some kids and wanted a normal, normal life like a regular old Joe. He's been hiding in this character of Hutch and suffering as he's been doing it for a long time. He's an accountant. He works at his father-in-law's factory, tool and die factory, and he kind of feels like he's disappearing. And then there is a home invasion, and it kind of sparks uh, a lot of anger and rage inside him, and he goes off and reconnects with his violent past, and in doing so, he creates more problems for himself, and he's forced to carry on beating the living shit out of people. Everybody get to the basement. What is happening? Don't call 911. The spark of the idea for Nobody came uh, from me, and a number of different things influenced it. One of them being, I'm uh, 58 now, but I was 54 when I had the notion that as a dad, you really start to feel like you're disappearing a little bit, uh, especially as you get older. Well, I mean, the whole world becomes about the younger generation. And in my case, my kids are now their 20s, but they were teenagers. And you start to really kind of disappear a little bit. You feel like you're not that important anymore, and that's hard to take. And then uh, on top of that, uh, we had a couple home invasions in my home. We actually had two in the course of just a few years, and they were pretty disconcerting. And uh, we kept things, uh, I kept things cool until the police arrived, but I always wondered if I could have done more. Could you even take a swing? No. Could have taken her, Dad. And there's even a certain residue of rage and anger that you have after that kind of uh, violation of your home. Uh, so that feeling that I had inside me, but also I was inspired by the fact that Better Call Saul uh, plays around the world. It plays well in uh, Russia and China and Italy and Romania and Latin America and I thought it'd be neat if I could do a movie that would play around the world, and I know action films do. So all those things taken uh, together uh, made me think, what is an action movie and a story that I could do? And I thought, what about a guy who's really disappeared himself, hidden himself away in the guise of a normal suburban dad? And he's done it for a long period of time, and he's got whatever rage or frustration I have, times 50. I wish they'd have picked my place, you know? Listen, I'm surrounded by the best in the business on Nobody. The fact that Derek Kolstad, who wrote John Wick, wanted to write it, he's writing the best action films that are playing right now. Ilya Nyshuler, who directed it, directed Hardcore Henry. He is action genre lover like nobody else on Earth. He knows every action movie and sequence, and he's just a great director who does beautiful imagery, does uh, these amazing music videos. Cool guy, Russian guy. David Leach led our pack along with Kelly McCormick. David and Kelly together surrounded me with the best stunt people, and my training was done by the best stunt actor in the world, Daniel Bernhardt. Remember that name. You've seen him in Atomic Blonde. He, he fights Charlize in that apartment scene. You loved him in Barry last year when he played the karate expert guy. Daniel's been in every, of, every great action movie of the last 20 years. He trained me for two years this guy showed extreme patience with me as I learned to throw a fake punch. But David Leach, you know, leading the way, I mean, we couldn't ask for anyone better. I, I was surrounded by pros, which is why the, 
the action sequences in Nobody are as good as they are. I'm gonna fuck you up. Well, my favorite sequence in the movie, action sequence, is the first big one, and it's in a bus where my character takes on uh, like eight different guys at once. And what I loved about that was it was close up, hand to hand, and had to be really choreographed and practiced, and we all had to work together. It was a real expression of like pure, intense rage, which I guess I've been wanting to get out of me for my whole fucking life. <laughs> it was hard to do. It was a real tester to see if I could even do this well. And, you know, I, I thought about Jackie Chan movies. I love his early films. Police Story is one of my favorite movies. And I wanted to get in there and do that kind of work. And that's what I trained for for two and a half years. And that bus fight was uh, a challenge, a danger, and a joy to do. And I hope people like it half as much as I love making it. We rehearsed in a taped off area with pads everywhere. And then we rehearsed a little bit on the bus but the truth is the actual bus has, you know, all these metal poles around you and little sharp edges that you, you don't rehearse around those things. So, um, yeah, I got hurt a little, but it was only from hitting my arms or hands on things, but nothing uh, structural. The hardest thing about doing Nobody for me was the lack of irony. I'm used to being very silly or playing a character who's a little bit ironically aware of themselves. This guy was earnest in a 70s action movie way, and that's what I wanted. So I deprived myself of that ironic dimension, and that was very hard for me as a person. I'm just used to making fun of the world and myself in it. I didn't get that outlet here. Saying these cold-blooded, intense action movie lines was uh, challenging for me and a joy. And I know they make people laugh, and I'm going to laugh when I see them because it's a thrill and you love to hear that impactful line. And I also think what's great about, especially that line on the bus where I say, I'm going to fuck you up, is you kind of go, I don't think you are. <laughs> and you can see it in my eyes. And I put it there, I hope. Uh, the character isn't sure if he's gonna deliver on that promise. And he hasn't done this in 20, 25 years. That's our story, that's our backstory for the character. So he's not sure he's gonna fuck these guys up. He's just committing to doing it. So I loved saying those lines. I committed to, to playing the part uh, sans irony. It was challenging, but I knew it would be, and uh, I was down for it down for the challenge of it. The last guy anyone wants to see at their door. Because it meant you didn't have long to live. This guy's had this shit sitting, festering inside him for a long time. And it kind of makes sense coming out of an older character, that degree of unbridled rage. Uh, whereas a younger person, you might feel more deranged but in this case, it feels maybe slightly more justified by life, by life just putting you down. And I think that maybe everybody can, can feel, relate to that. And when I say everybody, I mean even women who go, yeah, I'd like to fight back once in my life. He looks like shit, Dad. You should see the other guys. When I suggested the idea of myself in an action movie that everyone would laugh at me and tell me to uh, go back to reading whatever book I was reading <laughs> at the time, I was surprised that when I pitched it to people who should know better, and I said, you know, I play an earnest guy in Better Call Saul. I play a guy who wants things and fails and wants them again and doesn't quit and whose feelings are hurt. I mean, they're really hurt. And I think it's kind of like an action character, except he's not fighting. That's the only difference. And they said, uh, yeah, you're right. 
And I kind of got that response from a bunch of people. I was very surprised because I was fully prepared for people to laugh, laugh at me in the face and tell me to skedaddle. Who the fuck are you? Me? I'm nobody.